suppose that uh, you could replace a soldier's right arm with a robotic arm that would be able to respond more quickly in a combat situation and would likely save his or her life and that of their fellow soldiers. But they would then have that instead of their bi biological arm for the rest of their lives. Is it ethical to offer that to them? Is it ethical to demand that they make that change if they want to serve? The field of military ethics goes back uh, more than 2,000 years. So we have been wrestling with the issues of when is it just to take a nation to war, uh, how should wars be fought, uh, and how should we treat those who serve in wars, both during and, and after they return as veterans. Technology pushes these issues to another level. It doesn't require all new principles, but figuring out how to apply the tried and true principles of, for example, what's known as the just war tradition, to things like drone warfare, uh, to issues like bio-enhancement of troops, uh, where, where we're actually talking about manipulating troops' uh, genes in the future. Is this like, here's the rights and here's the wrongs, here's the do's and here's the don'ts? I would say it's more um, catching them up on what I was describing, the just war tradition, and then bringing them up to date on uh, the most current pressing issues that, that have to be solved. So we'll give them the grounding in the tradition, uh, and then we will um, also orient them to international law and uh, how that plays into the equation uh, in the current world. And then we will have them wrestle with, because again, the work's not done, um, it's not finished, uh, have them wrestle with how do you apply uh, these principles and these rules um, that you've now learned uh, in these, these questions that are still current. Uh, you rarely come across an ethical question uh, where the answer is anything goes. Um, there are usually going to be uh, some lines you should never cross, but there's some play within those lines. Mm -hmm. And within those lines, uh, figuring out the nuance and how do you write policies around that. That's why we hope some of the folks who take uh, this MA um, will be able to be part of that kind of policy writing, that they will go forward and, and uh, work in this field and work towards um, tweaking international law, or in some cases writing it for, for uh, areas that haven't been covered at all. Uh, I see right now, and I am encouraged by a, uh, an interest across all the services to remember uh, the, the idea of the warrior's code, the idea that there is a code of the warrior that has uh, been understood throughout history, no matter what culture you look at, um, that allows people to say, if I am a warrior, I am not a mere murderer, and I'm certainly not a torturer or a rapist. Uh, frankly, terms like honor coming back, I think is a good thing, as long as it's used correctly. My ideal payoff for this is that the conversation grows bigger, that more people in our general population are grappling with these issues, so that when decisions do have to get made, it is made in a more thoughtful way uh, with a broader consensus so that it represents uh, who we really are and who we want to be as a country.